Well, hello folks, it's Kevin again. I am back again in Theo National Park and tonight I'm going to do a quick hike, maybe two or three kilometers in and uh, camp overnight. The plan tonight is to set a tent. This will be my first time setting up a tent in the snow. Plus I have a new sleeping bag to try out. It's a Rab Ascent 900. So I hope that I'll be warm tonight. As you can see, I'll do a quick spin. It's a winter wonderland here right now. There is about mm, a few inches of snow. Hopefully it won't be so deep that uh, it'll be difficult going. I also want to test out a couple of other pieces of gear, but uh, I'll say more about that later. I'll be staying on the shores of the same lake that I was previously, a lake called Pulaka Yarvi, and hopefully I'll be able to get the tent set up. So come along with me on the trail. Let's see how we get on. In my last video I talk, spoke about erratics or giant boulders that have been moved by glaciers. Uh, what made me think of it actually about making a video about these it was inspired by this particular specimen which is, as I mentioned previously, the size of a small house or certainly at least of a cabin. Um, this thing is absolutely massive. What always makes me wonder though about these huge boulders is whether they were rolled along by the ice, much the same as, as a pebble would be rolled along a stream bottom, or if they were picked up and then trundled en masse until one side became smooth and worn down, and then eventually it was just dropped. The angular nature and the relatively smooth surfaces of this huge boulder would suggest that it's possibly the latter case. Okay, that's my tent all set up. Mattress pumped, sleeping bag ready. I've got this Rab Ascent 900 sleeping bag, which I'm very eager to try tonight. So hopefully I'll be warm. I was checking my geocaching app and there is a geocache about 100 meters away. So before I prepare food, I'm going to go now and uh, see if I can find this geocache. Yeah, it should be fun in the dark. Oh, that wind is a bit cold in my hands. It's supposed to be minus five now, according to the weather forecast, but there's a northeasterly wind blowing. And it's not a very strong wind, but according to the weather, forecast app it feels like minus 11 normally I go yeah right minus 11 but yeah it feels cold in my hands so I'm gonna get this geocache back in place and then I am going to get moving to get some blood circulation going because it's cold so tonight for dinner we have wonderful nor broccoli with onion and herbs into which I'm going to add some fried bacon or pecconi in Finnish. And then just to beef it up as well, I also have somewhere some frozen broccoli, which I'm going to actually add to it. So uh, yeah, first thing I'm going to do now is just boil the water for the, the broccoli. And then I'm going to add it to the mix in the bag and I made one of these uh, one of these uh, thermos bags from uh, it's kind of reflective stuff it's a bit like bubble wrap just covered in, in very thin aluminium foil so and then just taped together using duct tape so I'm going to try that for the first time and see how that works so that should be that should be quite interesting I want to talk about it iconic piece of Finnish camping gear or not just for camping but for other purposes as well and that's the Finnish puukko uh, a lot of people like to use mora knives when they're when they're uh, hiking or camping um, it's effectively the same thing except the only main difference is is that a puukko tends to have a wooden handle this particular model is made from birch wood or Burled birch, 
which originally has a some sort of fungus inside it, but it gives it this nice close grain structure and uh, it's uh, quite durable. The blade is about the standard length. They can get longer, they can be this long, they can be shorter. Um, so this is quite a good size for general purpose use. Uh, the blade itself is made from carbon steel and has a rat tail tang that runs through the center of the handle and is peened there at the base. The uh, middle part is made of some sort of, it's probably brass. And um, the blade itself takes a rather good edge. It's also quite pointed. Uh, it's a single edge blade, top edge being flat. And so it can be used for things like battening um, or indeed you can use it on a fire steel to get make sparks. Um, typically they come with a wooden sheath uh, or in this case it's a leather uh, sheath that has basically been boiled to make it hard and quite durable. Uh, the sheath itself then comes with a, a loop which simply sits on your belt. Yeah, so it's the Finnish Poco. Okay, second piece of gear is a DIY job. Basically what it is, is is a light strip which is powered by a USB cable, a USB plug. What I've done is feed it, I doubled it on itself and I fit it through a clear silicon plastic tube. On the ends I use some clear plastic shrink wrap and those are actually earplugs I put in there to plug it so it gives it some sort of waterproofness, but not much. And then the actual cable comes out here and the same thing with the shrink wrap. And then there's approximately a meter of cable, which then is linked up to a, a USB plug. The Originally the light strip was uh, three meters long and I paid seven euros for it. So I, I basically made this for, for 10 euros. Uh, currently it's a, a meter, about a meter and a half long. So it can be actually spread out through the length of the tent like this, or indeed it can be coiled together like so, and then used as a single light source from one direction. And if I plug in the plug to the uh, power bank, it produces quite nice light. It is not very white light. It's ever so slightly yellow, but still nice clean light. I don't have to bother with uh, batteries. I just have to make sure that I've got power from a power bank and it'll it'll last for quite a while. I've tested it so far. I managed to get approximately three hours f out of it from a 6,700 milli milliampere hour battery bank. The patented snow kelt light strip for camping. Hardly, but it's cheap and easy to, easy to put together. So I recommend giving it a go. folks I survived the cold night it's now minus 10 and uh, yeah getting dressed this morning was interesting putting on minus 10 degree trousers uh, I'm standing on the ice in the middle of this lake Polakka Järvi and uh, the sun is about to come up it's just about quarter past nine now in the morning and um, the island over there is or the headland actually over there is uh, where I stayed last night. Now yeah, last night was a cold one. Uh, the new Rab sleeping bag did quite well, although I had to put my jacket on at some stage because it was getting quite cold and also I was getting quite a lot of condensation inside the tent. So yeah, uh, I think I've come to the conclusion that even though the temperature dropped last night from minus 5 to minus 10 I would seem to be a cold sleeper that uh, even though the temperature the temperature rating for the sleeping bag was minus 19 or minus 20 I did wake up a few times when my feet had gone very cold it could be to do with the fact that the RAB Scent 900 has quite a lot of space inside so maybe that was the reason that I was losing heat I tried putting the baffle around the neck as tight as I could and also I had the hood of the sleeping bag completely around my face. 
So yeah, I definitely got a chance to put the sleeping bag through its paces last night, that's for sure. Okay, so, time to head back to the car. The sun has finally come up. I tried to do a time lapse, but uh, I think I might have missed the actual sunrise itself. It's uh, nearly 10 o'clock in the morning, and uh, yeah, it's about minus 10, so it's quite on the chilly side. Last night I came through that small little island, across the middle part, and then onto that island where I stayed. Or it's actually joined to the mainland now by some marshy land, but it's frozen. So yeah. So now I'm taking a shortcut back to the lake shore just by walking across the ice. How beautiful is this landscape? Superb. Even though it's minus 10, I'm uh, taking advantage of going quite briskly to build up heat. And uh, it's quite amazing that you know, if I have to stop and do anything for even a few minutes, my hands go numb quite quickly. But I can turn that around by just getting some gloves on and uh, moving. Uh, but definitely in these sorts of conditions, you wouldn't want to ignore having numb extremities for too long. Because, uh, yeah, if your hands get too numb, can't actually do anything, and that could be a problem. Okay, so I'm back in the car, safe and sound. According to the car's thermometer, it's minus 11.5 degrees, so it's officially the coldest I've been camping so far. Uh, all in all, great experience. Very interesting to see how different things are when it's cold, like below minus 5. Uh, everything is just that bit slower. A couple of things I noticed compared to camping in a lava one space. The tent is a lot smaller space and it was easy to keep losing things uh, because it was under something else. In the lava you can just spread everything out. Two, it was warmer in the tent because it excludes much of the draft un unlike being in the lava which is much more open. Uh, the third thing was, in the lava you don't have build-up of condensation on the inside of the tent. In fairness, last night it froze instantly, so it was dropping frost on me rather than drops of water. But where my sleeping bag had touched the frost, uh, it had gotten wet on the outside. Uh, the fourth thing is, the RAV sleeping bag, although it has a baffle along the zip, it was quite obvious that the cold air was coming in through the zip so I'm going to have to think about having more clothes on the inside of the inside of the bag in conditions similar to this. I would also add the hot water bottle trick and I would also probably use a sleep liner which might give me an extra couple of degrees. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. All in all Really, really good experience, much food for thought, and also some ideas for further camps that I can maybe tweak my gear even further. So I'll finish here and I'll say goodbye for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and hope to catch you on the next trail. Bye bye.